I want to give you part three of this particular lesson series, The Nine Divine Characteristics of Spiritual Growth. And tonight God has led me to talk about faithfulness. Somebody say faithfulness. faithfulness. And, and here's what I hope will happen. I hope that I will be able through the power of God's anointing to inspire you to want to be more faithful than you've ever been before. Amen. That I can share this good news in such a good way that when you walk out of that door, you'll, you'll be inspired to say, you know what? I want to give God just a little bit more. Is that all right? Here's where I want to start, amen. And I want you to look at the screen. I'm going to share some of my notes with you tonight. We are all born with God-given potential to impact the people around us. Somebody say, I, I have been born, have been born with God-given God potential to impact the people, the people around me. Around. Now, I don't want to rush through that because this is like one of the most important things that God keeps echoing in my spirit as a pastor and a shepherd in these last days to really convey to every single one of us that we need to be about the Father's business. Amen. You know, this world gives us a lot of things to, to do and sometimes we get distracted and sometimes we forget that, that we're supposed to be working. That we're supposed to be sharing the good news and telling people about the coming Christ and telling people how God can really make a difference. And, and if you're not careful, you'll get so busy that that you don't talk about him as much as you could and as much as you should. And as a pastor, I just want to remind you that only what you do for Christ is going to last. Amen? Amen. Here's what I want to tell you. Too often we allow four things to undermine what God wants to do in our lives. And I want to share those four things with you briefly. Number one, we allow our circumstances to undermine what God wants to do in our lives. Number two, we allow our disappointments. Amen. Amen. Number three, we allow our doubts. And then last but not least, kind of our focus uh, here tonight, we allow our immaturity to undermine what God wants to do in our lives. And I'm going to tell you this, the devil is after your faithfulness. Yes, he is. I know you think he wants your shout. He don't care nothing about your shout. He's after your faithfulness. Because if he can get your faithfulness, he can really handicap you from being the full impactful person that God wants you to be. I was looking at Galatians 5 and 22. It's a throwback from what we read last week, but I just want to keep it in your memory. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, yeah. mm, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Somebody say faithfulness. faithfulness. Come on, say it like you mean it. Faithfulness. faithfulness. Say this with me. Faithfulness, faithfulness. and maturity, and maturity. always. Go hand, in hand. go hand in hand. Whenever you see faithfulness, you're going to see maturity. Whenever you see maturity, you're going to see some degree of faithfulness. Why? Because you'll never experience one without embracing the other. Okay. It's important to know that Satan is the father of unfaithfulness. Yes. And when God dropped this in my spirit, I was like, God, that's really good. Why would you say that Satan is the father of unfaithfulness? Well, I also say that he's also the father of immaturity. And the reason why I say that is because he had the best job anybody could ever have. He was up in heaven with God, orchestrating, facilitating, praise and worship to God. You can't get much closer to God than being the chief worshiper. That was his job. And he allowed his immaturity and his unfaithfulness to God to sidetrack him. And he started to covet God's power, God's place, God's position. And if that is who he was then, watch this, that is who he is now. One of the things I know about Satan is he loves to make God's people look like his children. Woo! Good God Almighty. He loves to adopt us into his family and have us take on his traits because the more we resemble him, the less we resemble God. I want you to listen to the wisdom of Jesus Christ because life can sometimes be challenging in knowing which way to go. There are so many options in this world. There's so many distractions that if you're not a part of a Bible teaching church, well, a pastor or a leader or a shepherd, stays in the word of God, you'll be like a lot of folks who are claiming the name of Jesus, but they're drifting and they're falling by the wayside. And instead of becoming more powerful, they're becoming less and less effective. Here's the wisdom of Jesus. Number one, somebody say, enter by the narrow gate. Enter by the narrow gate. 
I want you to understand something that the clues here are clear. This narrow gate is narrow, it's tight, and it's unpopular. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about our lives. That this way that we are going to go is going to be narrow, it's going to be tight, and it's going to be unpopular according to scripture. Now, you gotta look at your life right now and ask yourself, am I on a narrow path? Am I on a tight path? Am I on an unpopular path? Or am I blending in with everything around me because I'm going with the flow? Somebody needs to take inventory tonight. I believe that the church in large really needs to take inventory because it's easy to go with the flow. According to scripture, God says you got to enter by what kind of gate? Watch this. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to Disneyland. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. Leads to destruction. Look at the way. Wide and broad. Wide and broad versus narrow. And many will find this way. Why? Because it's easy. Many will find this way because it's advertised. Many will find this way because it is made to look like the way to go. I need to tell you something, guys. This narrow way, it's not going to be easy. Look at the rest of the scripture. Because the narrow (laughs) gate is difficult. It is difficult, this way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So all of you who are having a hard time right now in your faith walk, all of you who are being challenged like never before, it might be because you finally got your foot on the right path. It might be, it just might be that finally your heart is really sincere toward God and you're putting forth effort that you've never put forth before. Who made you think it was going to be easy? You know what our problem is? We don't like being alone. We want everybody to like us. Social media has messed us up. We look for likes, we look for clicks, we look for approval. And I need to tell you something. If you're going to make it in the last days, you're going to have to let that go. Come on, you ain't going to say no. I'm I'm, I'm trying to help you make it to heaven. Jesus was one of the most unpopular people on the planet. We try to make it like Jesus was like this popular dude that everybody loved. No, 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 no. People hated Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus said they hated me. They're going to hate you. But we run around here looking for everybody to love us because we say we love Jesus. You need to understand something, that if everybody like you, you might not be doing the right thing. Mm, It's quiet now. Because when you start going against what the world says, now I love everybody, but I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to stand on it, and it makes me unpopular sometimes. It makes people not want to deal with me sometimes because I don't bend and I don't shape. I don't sugarcoat nothing. Amen, somebody? Why? Because when I stand before God, I don't want him to say, why did you sugarcoat my word, son? Why did you switch it up to make people happy? Why did you not preach this so that people would give more? No, 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 no. When I stand before God, he's going to say, well done, thy good and You miss it. I'm teaching you. Thy good and faithful. So all y'all that are trying to be good, you better put some faithful with your good because he's looking for the good and the faithful. Come on. Come on. The world will tell you all you got to do is be good. No. God said be good and faithful. Can I go a little deeper? This is why faithfulness matters. Somebody say faithfulness Faithfulness. matters because it helps helps. keep our feet feet. on the narrow, narrow, tight, tight, unpopular unpopular path. path. And catch this before I go forward. You may not be unpopular with people, but you should be unpopular with Satan. That's right. That's right. Hmm. You should be very unpopular with Satan, especially the more you begin to grow. Here's what I found out. You really don't have to cut people loose. I found out you ain't got to send nobody no notice. You ain't got to tell folks, you know, I don't want you in my life. All you got to do is get closer. And closer, you know I'm telling the truth, and closer to God. And people start saying things like this, you change. You, you different. You, you acting funny. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, first of all, I ain't acting nothing. This is real. Okay? Second of all, the closer I get to God, if you got the devil in you, then there's going to be some friction. Amen, somebody? I'm challenging you today 
to set your mind going forward to become more faithful. And I'm not just talking about church attendance. Please do not limit faithfulness to church attendance because there's a lot of folks got good church attendance going to bust hell wide open. Amen. Some of them are pastors, ministers, teachers. Amen. Showing up is not going to get you in the kingdom. Okay, God's doing more than taking attendance. He's trying to figure out, are we faithful when we leave this place? Are we faithful to him? Faithful to his voice when he says witness? Faithful to his voice when he says shut your mouth? Faithful to his voice when he says forgive those that have wronged you? I'm not giving any clap, but I'm going to preach it anyway tonight. See, faithfulness is more than just coming to church. It's a life that says, you know what? I pledge allegiance to my God. I pledge allegiance to my God no matter what it costs me. Why? Because only what I do for him will last. This is a good lesson. <laughs> Say neighbor, neighbor. The, only the only way to check your faith, to check your faith. <laughs> is to check your feet. Check your feet. All right. Put that on a t-shirt and give me 10% of all sales. All right. The only way to check your faith is to check your feet. I'm trying to tell you, check your feet and see what path you're on. Because here's what I know, Pastor Tish, the path never lies. There you go. Men lie. Yeah. Women lie. Yeah. The world will lie. But the path, it don't never lie. I tell people all the time, you can check your patterns to figure out whether or not you're on the right path. Right. I'm not going to get a lot of claps because we, we can talk a real good game. It's like somebody telling you they love you, but they don't ever show you they love you. After a while, you, you get tired of hearing, I love you, I love you. you be like, well, do something. Yeah. Because love is an action word. Well, let me tell you something about this path that we're on. If you're on the right path, it's going to prove to everybody that your feet, your heart, your mind, your body belong to God. And I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about consistently sticking with God come hell, high water, or no water. That's what I'm talking about being faithful. Can I go deeper? Here's what Job said. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning. See, we want to say what Job said. Job said, my feet have kept, what's the key word? Closely. I have followed whose steps? His steps. I have kept to whose ways? Without turning aside. Look at me because I want to share something with you. If the enemy can't get you off the path, he'll settle with getting you to turn to the side. Huh? Yeah. Some of you haven't left the path, but sometimes we're tempted to turn to the side. Sometimes we're tempted to, to turn away from what God said. And you got to make sure that you stay on the path no matter what the enemy throws at you. I have this thing I call dominating every day no matter what comes your way. Yeah. People think, well, that means, you, you, does it sound like well, you got to have a perfect day? No, no, no. It means no matter what happens, I'm going to say what God said, and I'm going to step right over whatever the enemy puts in front of me. I'm not going to be mad all day. I might get mad for a couple of seconds. I might get mad for a few minutes, but I'm not going to give my whole day away to anger. Amen, somebody? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody asked me a couple years ago, said, Pastor Troy, do you ever have a bad day? I said, not anymore. They say, what you mean? I said, no, I don't have bad. How you don't have a bad day? Because I, I only have bad minutes. Come on, folks. Do you understand you don't have to be mad all day? Some of y'all been mad a month. Don't, just, don't, just look up. So don't look down because I know I'm talking to you. Some of you have been mad for years. The moment you decide, I want to be free. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to be mad no more. And just like that, you can be free. See, you locked in a prison and the key is in your pocket. <laughs> Good God Almighty. I don't want to be a slave to the enemy. No. So when the enemy comes for me and the enemy comes for me a thousand times more than he comes for you. Don't let the smile fool you. Come on, somebody. Don't let, don't let all the encouraging words fool you. Don't let the early morning posts fool you. I'm fighting the devil on a level that would probably destroy the average person. Amen. Why? Because if he can get the head, the body's gone. But every day, every day when I wake up, when I put 10 toes down, see, first of all, I'm faithful in how I start my day. Teach, Pastor Troy. Some of y'all want to run to God when you got a problem. No, 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 no. I start my day with God. I end my day with God. And then I have daily snacks throughout the day where I'm sitting and talking with God. I'm quoting the word of God. I'm thinking about scriptures. I'm listening to sermons that I preach because they're really good. Amen, somebody? I keep my mind stayed on him. But the Bible says if you keep your mind stayed on God, he'll keep you in perfect 
Can I go deeper? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, check your feet. Yeah. Come here, Proverbs 3 and 6. This is a good word. I like this right here. In all your ways. Here we go. What does all mean? Come on, come on, you're a magna cum laude graduates. What does all mean? It means all, right? All your ways. How many of y'all know we got ways? So stop telling me that's just the way I am. Submit that to God. That's just the way I was brought up. You need to submit that to God. I've been this way all my life. God says, submit all your ways to him. And here, here is the beautiful exchange that happens. That's how I know some of y'all are not submitting your ways to God. Because God's word says, if you submit your ways to him, he will make your paths straight. You missed it. That path has an S on it. In other words, everything that's crooked in your life, God will straighten it out if you'll give it to him. Good God Almighty. Let me bless you. If your finances are jacked up, give them to God. He'll make them straight. You don't want to hear me. Come on. See, I'm talking about faithful in every area. Faithful in finances mean I put God first. Come on. Can I get a witness? Don't shout me down. Listen, you do what you want to do, but you won't say I didn't teach you. I am faithful when it comes to my finances and putting God first. It's not an afterthought. It is the first thing and it's something I'm happy about doing. Here, God, get your money. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to look at it. This is your money. Here, get this off the top, God. Why? Because I want you to know that I want to submit to you my faithfulness in my finances. God wants to show you the power of faithfulness in every area and he wants to straighten out your crooked stuff. Come on, you ought to clap right there if you got some crooked stuff. God says, I'll make your path straight, but you got to give it to me. Why are you still holding on to the crooked stuff? Why are you holding on to something that only God can straighten it out? Now, you messed it up, man. You might as well own all of that. You, you messed it up bad. But I've never seen a situation that God couldn't straighten out if we would just get out of the way and give it to God and say, God, I want to be faithful according to your principles. Who am I talking to tonight that's got to submit some things to God? Say this with me. Our ways and our paths stay crooked as long as we do not Submit them them to Christ. Christ. Say the issue. issue. Oh, this is so good to me. Say the issue issue is not God. God. The issue issue is submission. submission. Do your thing, PT. PT, can you do something for me? PT, can you do something for me? I'm doing it. The issue, y'all pray for me. The issue is not God. I'm so sick of people, I'm waiting on God, and you're not. God's waiting on you. I'm hoping God. No, 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 no. God is waiting on you to fully be persuaded enough to go all in. Do I have any? Do I have any? Ain't nobody going to testify because we're in church. But do anybody know anything about gambling? Okay. Lord, everybody saved tonight. Don't nobody know about gambling. Okay, for, uh, for, for those that know about gambling, if you go to the casino, they have various games where they give you chips. Let me, let me explain this to folks who, who know what I'm talking about, but they want to pretend. They give you chips. Thank you, Willie. They give you chips. Ain't that Willie? Yeah. I know he know about gambling. They give you chips. <laughs> chips equal to your money. You put your chips on the table. They got games like blackjack where you put it in certain spots, uh, roulette where you put it on a certain number, they spin it in the ball. I'm the only one that know about this stuff. And, and you place your bet, watch this. And if your number come up, if the thing hit right, you win. Every now and then you'll see somebody they're so confident. Sometimes it's in a poker game. They're so confident. Help them get it, Holy Ghost. In a poker game, you'll see a poker player that is so confident in his hand. I'm preaching better than your amen. So confident in his hand that he says these words, I'm going all in. Come here, Pastor Troy. I'm going all in. I'm so confident that I can't lose with the stuff that I use that I'm going all in. Proof that you don't go all in is proof that you don't believe God can turn it around. When you become convinced, you'll be like, what's 10%? That's right. what's, what's a tithe and an offering? Baby, I'm going all in. And let me tell you something. I ain't never lost going all in on God. Amen. But let me tell you something. You can't go all in if you can't be faithful. That's right. To be faithful means I'm sold out to God. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Even in my imperfections. See, some of y'all are drawing back on me because you think I'm talking about perfection. You think that, that this don't qualify for you because you got some issues in your tissues. Honey, you better learn how to be faithful with all them issues in your tissues. You better hear the heart of God tonight. 
God ain't waiting on you to get it together. God's waiting on you to bring it to him so he can straighten it all out. Give him praise if you hear me tonight. The issue is not God. The issue is submission. I submit to God because I trust him. I submit to God because I've tried him. And some of you should be way more faithful than you are based on all the things God has already done for you. Some of you should really be ashamed at your lack of faithfulness because God has proven himself to you over and over. You ain't going to testify, but God done done some stuff for you that you ain't told nobody about. Are you here tonight? So why are you still holding back on God? Why are you riding with your foot on the brake like God can't be trusted? When he has been the most faithful entity in your entire life. Peep this. He's been faithful even when you weren't faithful. Imagine what God would do if you would go all in. I got to go. Somebody say he's teaching good. Say I got to be submissive. Say Pastor Troy. Submissive to what? God's word. I'm not talking about being submissive to no pastor. I'm not talking about being submissive to, to no church. I'm talking about being submissive to God's word. Now, as your pastor and your leader, as long as I'm in God's word, we'll never have a problem. That's right. But if I ever step outside of God's word and tell you to do something, you should say, Pastor, hell to the no. Amen, somebody? That's exactly what you should say, bro, bro. I can't do that because I can't find that nowhere in the word, which is why y'all got to stop going to church. It's got y'all doing stuff that ain't in the Bible. It ain't no sin for a woman to wear. Come on. It ain't no sin for a woman to wear pants and makeup and jewelry. Come on, somebody. It ain't no sin for us to dance and cha-cha slide. Come on. You better go to a Bible teaching church. When you don't know, you follow all the goofy stuff. Somebody say, I got to submit to God's word. Are y'all getting this word? I got it.